Now we're going to take a look at concurrency issues. The first thing we're going to look at is how to find processes that are involved in deadlocks. Remember that deadlocks are resolved internally by SQL Server, so there's not anything that you have to do to fix that issue. Nevertheless, a large number of deadlocks can slow everything down. So we'll take a look at those and I'll mention a few things that you might be able to do to reduce the number of deadlocks. Some deadlocks are probably inevitable in most circumstances, but too many can cause problems. Then we're going to look at something that is probably more uh, common and therefore usually a bigger problem, and that is blocking. Some blocking, again, is completely inevitable. Um, sometimes processes are going to want the same resource, and the first one to grab it wins until it releases it. So we're going to, to see how we can find out which processes are blocking which other processes, and we'll talk about some things that we can do to reduce that problem. Finally, we're going to take a quick look at latches. Remember that latches are held by threads. And we have, some, so we have a lovely dynamic system view that we can use to find out what's going on with latching and see what processes may be causing latching issues. We're not going to do a whole lot with that one uh, because that's pretty much internal to processes. But it is nice to be able to figure out processes that are keeping too many latches for too long. And then those processes may be able to be rewritten. Now we're going to take a little look at latch weight types and times and things like that. Uh, remember that we have the wonderful, wonderful catalog views these days in SQL Server 2005. You really owe it to yourself to get accustomed to catalog views. So I'm going to launch Management Studio and then I'm going to run a script that is just going to return a bunch of stuff from the catalog view that we use for uh, finding out what's going on with our latch weights. Connecting, of course, to the default instance. And we don't need the Object Explorer, so I'm going to close that window and open a new query. And paste in the SQL we're going to use. The, the catalog view that we're going to be using is the DMOS weight stats. We're going to filter out lazy writer sleep and wait for wait types. Uh, the wait type, by the way, is the, is the resource that is being waited for. Uh, we're, we're really not interested in the ones that are simply waiting. Okay? We want ones that are waiting because of some reason. And we are going to order by wait time in milliseconds descending. So we're going to look at the ones that have been waiting the longest for some particular reason first. Let me execute the query. And Shazam. Uh, we're not going to go through every single one of these, but I want you to notice uh, what we've got. Remember that we selected star from this catalog view. There are, there, there are only five columns in it. Uh, so here is the trace buffer flush. And this is the waiting tasks, the wait time, in milliseconds, the maximum wait time in milliseconds. Now the maximum, you may say, well, now wait a minute, the wait time is a whole lot larger than the maximum wait time. That's per task, okay? Uh, and, and we have a lot of these. Remember that the wait type is what is being waited for, right? So we have, we'll scroll down here a little bit and take a look at this. We have various, we have various uh, uh, locks and things that are being waited for and latches. Here we have transaction latches, okay. various kinds of locks. We have page latches. Here's a here's a checkpoint. Now notice these aren't down here. These are not waiting. Okay. Remember we, we ordered by wait time. So we got everything. We could have thrown in uh, uh, where wait time MS 
is not zero or is greater than zero or something like that. But that's all right. Uh, so you can see that we can find out a lot of information about what's going on with our latch weight times and latch weight types. What resource is being weighted for? Uh, how many tasks are waiting for that resource and how long have they been waiting? Uh, checking this every once in a while can be a big help in helping you get a feel for uh, the, the trends in SQL Server. There's always going to be latch wait times. But if these numbers are going up, especially if they seem to be going up precipitously, then it's probably a really good idea to try to figure out why.